Good day everyone and welcome to Home at the Hollow and welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's recipe is a true in classic. The recipe I'm talking about today is baked eggs with three cheese and a spice baked pears. It was by far one of the most popular breakfast dishes that we served at the inn. It, you can prepare it well ahead of time, refrigerate it, freeze it. It bakes off beautifully and virtually everyone absolutely loves it. And now if this is a recipe that you are interested in, or if you just want to hang out with me for a while, then keep on watching. So I'm gonna go through the ingredients list as quickly as possible. For our baked eggs and three cheeses, one of the most favorite that I served at the end. Of course, I served a lot of different foods at the end, but this was one of the favorites. In this bowl, I have mixed up very, very well seven eggs. And what I mean by very, very well, you don't you don't want to say like take a, a fork or you know whatever <laughs> and pull it up and be able to see egg whites. You know, you know how egg whites are just kind of, they, they want to do their own thing. Well, not in this recipe. Very, very well beaten. One cup of whole milk. If you don't have whole milk, just use what you have. Two teaspoons of sugar. I've already put one in the flour here. Two teaspoons of sugar, and I'm going to put that in a half a cup of flour. And what I've also added to this half a cup of flour is one teaspoon of baking powder. And so that's ready to go. I have 16 ounces of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. I have four ounces of cream cheese, room temperature, and cut up the best that I could do. And I have a 16 ounce container of small curd cottage cheese and one quarter of a cup, half a stick of melted butter, salted, unsalted, whatever it is that you have. And that's pretty much the gist of it. I think one of the things that I just adore about this recipe is it can be frozen before it's baked, after it's baked. It's, it's, and it's a very, it's a beautiful, beautiful dish, but I've already got my pans here on the side, uh, already buttered and ready to fill. And I, I think that's one of the things that um, is also pretty good about this. If you get everything in place, it goes by pretty quick. But all I'm going to do is just add my cottage cheese in here. And set this aside. Just give it a good gentle stir. You don't need to go crazy. And all of this Monterey Jack cheese. And all of this cottage cheese. If it, if it will, if it will cooperate. Get this mixed up as best that you can. I'm going to add the milk. I have yet to meet anyone that did not just absolutely love this dish. And I did I did try to cut my uh, cream cheese up as small as I possibly could. I'm going to add my quarter of a cup of melted butter. I'm 
And then I'm going to add all of my flour. It's a half a cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and two teaspoons of granulated sugar. Now, isn't that just, it's gonna be a beautiful dish. Your guests are gonna be so impressed. And so what, what I've kind of decided to do, and this is just for you guys, and I think that's mixed up pretty well. Let's see if I can get this ahead of time. And I've already gotten, now this is not a deep dish pie plate. No. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to, to, I have, everything is buttered here. Everything is buttered very, very well. And I've got larger ramekins and smaller ramekins. And the larger ramekin takes about a cup. That's a very healthy serving of this, guys. This is going to puff up. And then it's going to settle back down at, after you take it out of the oven, it will settle back down. I only allow this to cool just long enough to handle it and get it on the plate as quickly as possible. This is, I'm only going to put a half a cup in the smaller one. And I'm going to bake this, this one off. And I'm going to bake, you know, one or two, probably two of these off so you guys can see what to anticipate um, as this as this bakes and and how it looks when it when it's served. And of course, I, you guys know me. I'm going to make a bit of a mess. And get every last bit of that. I have so many breakfast and brunch dishes. I I used to be able to tell my guests that they could stay with me two weeks and not have eat the same thing at breakfast every day. And so there you go. So now at this point, it's entirely up to you guys. At this point, if you want to cover it with plastic wrap, wax paper, foil, and then freeze it. It will bake off just fine. It can stay frozen and it will bake off perfectly fine. Or you can refrigerate it, you know, overnight and then bring it and let it set to room temperature before you bake it in a 350 oven for 45 to 50 minutes. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start baking these off and kind of take you along the journey a little bit because you may have to, or I, I should say, I might have to take these out before the pie is done. And I'm, of course, that's logic is just gonna dictate that. But um, there you go, it's just that easy. And it, it really is delicious. It's um, an occasional breakfast. Uh, you, you guys are going to love it, and uh, I hope you join me for when for the Bake Off. So we are going to start with our a glass pan, a metal pan, whatever kind of a casserole dish that you have for the pears. You want them in one layer, and I have very lightly put a little bit of butter in here, to which I'm going to add, and this is... <laughs> I'm not measuring, but, and the reason I'm not measuring is because it depends on your pan. You could have like a really deep pan or like a shallow one like mine. So the, the point of the orange juice or apple juice, if you have that, use what you have, is just to keep the pears from scorching. Now to that, I'm going to add I guess I should measure for you guys. Sometimes I just honestly don't measure. 
with something like this anyway. I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I have some nutmeg here. Um, not a quarter of a teaspoon because that's not, not a good thing. Maybe, I think you guys can see, just maybe that much. Not, not a lot. And I could not find my ground cloves this morning. So what I did is I did have, I do have whole cloves somewhere, whole cloves. And I've just ground them up a little bit. Now, the one thing you really need to be super, super careful with um, is cloves. Because if you put too much, I have found out if you put too much, it will wind up, the whole dish will wind up tasting like bubble gum. So, I mean, really, you just want just a pinch not too, too much. So we're just going to set this aside. And now if you want to, you can add a little bit more butter. And I'm going to do that in a, in a moment. But I'm going to set, try to set everything aside and make a little bit of room. Get something to cut with. I, of course, I've already washed my pears. Um, with pears, it's really tricky baking them. Mine are just just a little give to it, and these are actually perfect. I can smell them. I can just it has just a little bit of give. If yours are softer, then you want to bake them for a shorter period of time because at this point, Let's see, I think I had, oh yeah, right here in front of me. I'm gonna take like an apple um, core and I've cored that out. It's very soft on the inside, so I'm gonna core a little bit more. I'm gonna take the stem aspect of it out or the bottom and I'll take the stem here Take it out just like that. Turn it over and repeat the process. <laughs> and no matter if there is a, a stem or not, I'm going to take this. Sometimes this leading down into here will be tough. And I have enough room for three, probably four pairs, but I'm going to do just three today. Let's see if we can get this out. This one doesn't want to come. Let's see. Let's see if we can get this. There you go. Or if you if you don't have pears, if you have apples, if you want to do apples, that's also ex an excellent idea. But please bear in mind when you're doing an apple like this, it will take a little bit longer, of course. But here we go. My uh, baked eggs with three cheese is ha happy in the oven. And what I typically do kind of in the middle of the bake time, because that's almost an hour bake time for my baked eggs with three cheeses, I will put these, I will slide these into the oven, same temperature, 350, and allow these to bake. Oh my goodness, I'm going to start at 5, 10 minutes. I probably could right now, let me set, set this aside. I probably could right now t take my knife and it's going to have some give. You want to keep it these as firm as possible, but you want them heated through. And that's why, you know, it's it's kind of uh kind of up to you how long you bake them. You certainly don't want to turn them into pear butter, but 5 minutes, 10 minutes and you should have some baked pears that are just delicious. Everyone loves them. 
We used to get them by the large sackfuls in Nova Scotia. And um, there you go. So that's all you need to do. It's just that simple and it's just that quick. And before you bake, add a couple of spoonfuls of brown sugar to your orange juice and a teaspoon or a tablespoon, whichever you prefer, of some maple syrup. Yum. So I'm ready to dish up. These look so, so good. And oh, I wish you could smell these, but um, it's just mm, yum, yum, yum. Very, very good. And just turn it over slightly. And if you want to add a little bit of the orange juice to this, I think that would be really, really good too. Just a little bit. Going to add just a smidge of vanilla yogurt. I'm gonna do this <laughs> out of my hand because I have slightly overdone it before and I don't want that to happen again. A wee bit of a dusting of some cinnamon. And a little bit, just a wee bit. Of a little bit of sugar. Natural, this is all natural sugar. And there you go. A perfectly baked pear. And it, it gives just just why it's just that easy you still want these to be you know firm and there you go they are so delicious guys so guys this is this just came out of the oven it is still bubbling this is the smallest ramekin that i made up and this is about maybe a little browner if you want it but this was 45 minutes at 350 degrees and i'm gonna see if i can try to encourage this to come out now you know if you want to you can always serve these in the dishes themselves they will puff up but once you take them out and turn them onto a plate they will you know kind of settle down a little bit so you know, don't don't worry too much about that. And I'm going to become prepared because, oh, it's super, super, super hot. Come on, come on. Let's see if I can do this. Oop. And there we go. We're going to turn this over. So the pretty side is up top. Oops. And there you go. I probably should have waited <laughs> a little bit to and let it cooled off a little bit in the ramekin. It would have turned out or, or actually released itself, I should say, a little bit easier, but I wanted you guys to see this. This is delicious. I still have my larger ramekin and the pie in the oven. I'm going to let the, you know, just a little bit larger ramekin go for, uh, I set the timer for another 12 minutes. But what I'll do is once everything is out, I'll do just a very, very quick video and do a photo for you guys and we will do a taste test. Although I know I don't have to do a taste test because this is delicious. And oh my goodness, I am back. As you can see, I have, excuse me, figures. Sorry guys, <laughs> it's been that kind of a morning. And then some, anyway, <laughs> as you can see, I, I have this one totally cooled off. This one came out of the oven probably 10 minutes ago, something like that. I've already loosened it up a little bit. And as you can see, I think you guys can see, it's always really hot. Sorry guys. 
it's quite a bit darker. So it really depends, you know, how dark that you actually really, really want it. But we're gonna just slide this right out of here. Yikes, hot. And now I haven't salt and peppered either one of these, but I'm gonna take a taste of the one that's already cooled off and I'll bring you guys in on a little bit. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna cut this right in half. My pie is still in the oven. That The pie, eight inch, nine inch pie like that is probably gonna take an hour and a bit, but you will know it will puff up kind of like, kind of like a pecan pie. It puffs up and then when you bring it back out, it, it slowly goes back down. So, you know, don't worry about that, but I'm gonna show you, let's see if I can, and just how this looks. And we're gonna cut this one. <laughs> and show you how this looks. Steam is still coming off of it, but a wee bit of a taste. You can definitely see the cottage cheese and all the cheeses running through there, but mm, a huge, huge thumbs up. I hope you, that you give this a try. It's perfect with bacon or ham, whatever it is that you want to serve with your breakfast and the spiced baked pears that I'm getting ready to pull from the oven. Give it a try, enjoy, and with that, I hope to see you here, right here, home again at the Hollow. Goodbye, guys. So she has come out of the oven. Oh, goodness, let's see. We're still pretty warm. Let's see, let's just kind of go through this and and make sure that it's going to be beautiful for everybody. Let's see. And see, this is about how much it, oops, sorry, about how much it settles down. It's not too bad. Puffs up, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful, breakfast and let me get a, a small plate for you guys to see because you know you you want to present these really very very pretty I think you guys can see how pretty of course this is a generous piece but um, this is this is sorry this is what you guys are looking for. Just beautiful.